Each day, there is a virtual blizzard of tweets, Facebook updates, and blog posts. Do businesses need to keep on top of this, and how can they best do that? Joining us for this week's Smith Business Close-Up is Wendy Moe, Associate Professor of Marketing and Academic Director of the new Marketing Analytics Program at the Robert H. Smith School of Business. Dr. Moe, thank you very much for being with us. You, you see that blizzard as, as a marketing opportunity. A absolutely. It's an, it's an opportunity for um, small and large businesses both to use social media as a promotional tool but more importantly, from my perspective, to use social media as a source for marketing research, a source for data, a, a, a channel to connect with their customers. So, so there's all this information floating around. How do companies go about uh, capturing it, making use of it? That's a great question, and every time I talk to any company that's talking about social media monitoring and reading what their customers are saying online, it's all the, the organizations are always just overwhelmed with the amount of data that faces them. And so what I always tell them is to stop measuring what's easy to measure, stop looking for the easy metrics that are, for example, like uh, the number of Twitter followers or the number of tweets, um, but really start thinking about what your organ organizational strategy is and what you're trying to accomplish with social media. And once you have that goal in mind, then you go out into the social media data and look for answers for that, rather than just aimlessly wandering around different sources of information to try and get whatever metric you can compute just by look, reading at reviews or looking at your tweets, et cetera. What's the payoff uh, from doing this well? What's the, the downside from, from maybe ignoring it? I don't know if there's any specific examples you can cite or, or, or mm -hmm. types of, of businesses that have had either a success story or a failure. Well, what, I, what I've been telling organizations is, is that social media is a great source for potential marketing research data. And so marketing research can be a very expensive endeavor for a lot of organizations. And large organizations who are um, resource constrained with their marketing budgets or need to respond more quickly to customers rather than waiting months for a marketing research report to come out, can look to social media to get a really quick feel for what their customers think about their product, how they feel about their brand, et cetera. But I think probably the biggest payout is for the small to medium-sized businesses who may not have really big marketing research budgets. And what they can do is use social media as a source for uh, marketing research if they do it right. What, what social media platforms are most important? What tools, uh, maybe uh, off the shelf, easily available tools, would you recommend? So that's a great question. So a lot of, um, a lot of organizations and companies just they want, a, they want a quick answer to that question that you just asked me. And I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but there's not a really easy answer. You can't only look at Facebook or only look at Twitter. And you really need to look at a, an array of social media platforms. Um, and the reason for that is some of my research has shown that, is that each of these venues, each of these social media environments have their own biases. They have their own trends. And so, for example, um, we find that uh, what people say on Twitter tends to be a little bit more positive. People are happier and more optimistic on Twitter than they are on, let's say, ratings and reviews websites. And so you can't really focus on any one place to, look, to, to measure your customer's sentiment. And you really need to look at a variety of these places, which makes the task a little bit harder in terms of um, what monitoring platforms to use. But what I do tell, tell organizations is that don't focus on any one metric for Twitter or any one metric for Facebook, but use metrics that kind of leverage information across different, different venues. You, I, I noted there's a, a new marketing analytics program. You're the academic director for that. What's the, yes. the level of interest, you would say, in students? I'm guessing it's pretty high. This is hot stuff. It is. Um, I think the le um, level of interest from employers is even larger. So employers have constantly been telling me that they absolutely need this skill set, but they have a very hard time finding the right talent, the right, the right recruit that has both the quantitative skills to deal with the data and the marketing and customer orientation and framework that these organizations need. And so a lot of students haven't quite figured that out. Some, those who have are very well positioned to get one of these very, um, very good jobs. What, what kind of background would, would somebody need to be favorably considered for, for this master's program? 
Well, we're looking for uh, students with a um, quantitative aptitude. They don't necessarily have have to have very uh, su uh, previous quantitative training because as long as you like math, you like numbers, you like data, you know our program will teach them how to do how to use the proper analyses for the appropriate marketing and business questions. And so we're really looking for an interest in marketing and an aptitude for quantitative analysis. You have a book uh, coming out this fall yes. or later this year. Tell us about that. The book is titled Social Media Intelligence, and it basically um, walks through the process of um, how consumers post to social media, why consumers um, contribute to social media, what are the psychological effects that people, ha uh, people are subject to, and all these um, trends and behaviors will shape what gets said on social media. And so basically the first half of the book deals with the science of opinion and an opinion expression. And once we understand the science of opinion and of the psychology behind people's behavior on social media, then we have a better sense as to what all the comments that we see online actually mean. And so the second half of the book is dedicated to um, strategies and approaches and methods to use that social media, uh, the social media comments that we see as part of our business strategy. And, and this book launch is going to have the, the most effective, best managed social media campaign in, in all of history behind it, I guess. We're going to try our best. Very good. Wendy Moe joining us from the Smith School of Business. Thank you for your time. Thank you.